Hi, this is Dr. Shweek Chima. Today we will be talking about uh, acute kidney injury. We used to call it as acute renal failure, but not anymore because all the kidney injuries or renal dysfunctions are not failure. So the new terminology, just like chronic kidney disease, not CRF, is acute kidney injury. And this is Professor Shweek Chima, Diplomat American Board of Internal Medicine and Nephrology. And this uh, lecture is focusing on the medical student, house officer, medical officer, and maybe first-year nephrology fellows. This is very important topic because many patients who are hospitalized in the wards as well as in the ICU end up developing or end up coming with acute kidney injury. So everyone in each specialty, including OBGYN and surgery, need to have a basic knowledge uh, about acute kidney injury. Um, Let's talk about uh, how do we define acute kidney injury. So acute kidney injury uh, has been defined as sudden uh, rise in creatinine or fall in GFR renal dysfunction. But this definition could vary. Someone might say uh, rise in creatinine from 1 to 2 is a rise in creatinine or fall in GFR. So KDGO has defined acute kidney injury if your creatinine has increased by 0.3 milligram per deciliter from baseline within 48 hours, that is the definition of acute kidney injury. Also, if the rise in creatinine is more than 1.5 times the baseline uh, within the last seven days, that is also acute kidney injury. Or fall in urine output is less than 0.5 ml per kg per hour which means if you have, uh, if your weight is 100 kilogram, so that would come out to be around uh, 500 uh, ml per day or 50 ml or less than that per hour of urine output. So fall in urine output, fall in GFR, rise in creatinine, and the limit is 0.3 milligram per deciliter within 48 hours is acute kidney injury. So uh, chronic kidney disease is defined as a, um, chronic permanent loss of kidney function over a period of months, usually more than three months. So then question arises, what is between seven days and three months? So they have coined a new term, acute kidney disease for that. Um, you could call a subacute rise in creatinine or subacute kidney injury. The better term is acute kidney disease. Uh, and then acute kidney injury has also been classified and there are different uh, criteria. One of them is refill criteria, but the one most commonly used and you should all use this one is KDGO, uh, acute kidney injury network uh, classification in which class one is same as the definition of acute kidney injury, uh, more than 0.3 or stage one more than 0.3 milligram per deciliter rise in creatinine or less than 0.5 ml per kg per hour decrease in urine output is the definition of stage one acute kidney injury. And then stage two is if the rise in creatinine is two to three folds or the GFR or the urine output is decreased to 0.5 ml per kg, but for more than 12 hours. And stage three is when the rise is more than three fold or at any point, the creatinine is more than four. And at the same time, urine output is even decreased, uh, less than 0.3 ml per kg per hour for more than 24 hours. So the most important information you need for you to define if someone has acute kidney injury is their baseline creatinine. Because you need to see a certain increase in creatinine, but you have to have a baseline. If you don't have a baseline, you can't tell. So if someone say their kidney function were normal previously, kidney disease could be asymptomatic. But if you know their baseline creatinine was 1.5 and now the creatinine has increased as a result of say gastroenteritis to 1.8, that would be 0 0.03 milligram rise and that would be class one of acute kidney injury. But if the creatinine goes up to more than four, that will be class three. So this classification is very important for research point of view, for the severity of the disease, for the prognosis of the disease. Uh, so you must know that. Uh, and this is different from the etiological uh, classification. We used to differentiate 
acute kidney injury based on the causes as pre renal azotemia intrinsic renal disease and post renal acute kidney injury and intrinsic renal disease is further divided into four parts you know kidney has tubule if there is a damage or dysfunction to the tubules that would be acute tubular necrosis then kidney tissue also has glomeruli and the dysfunction of that or glomerular nephritis could also cause nephritic syndrome and rpg and then renal dysfunction so that would be a glomerular disease causing intrinsic renal damage and then there is interstitium and interstitial cell the inflammation or dysfunction of that could lead to acute interstitial nephritis and then there are small vessels it could uh, uh, result in inflammation of those uh, small vessels causing vasculitis like what happens in good pasteur syndrome or wegener's granulomatosis the tubular damage could be ischemic and nephrotoxic we will discuss in detail in the next few slides so let's talk about uh, pre renal azotemia or pre renal acute kidney injury or pre renal acute renal failure the most common cause of acute kidney injury almost 70 80% people have acute kidney injury because of renal hypoperfusion and what are the causes anything which leads to decreased perfusion and blood supply to the kidney could cause pre renal azotemia for example if you have hypovolemia secondary to hemorrhage volume depletion gastroenteritis fluid loss diuretic third spacing burn anything which causes hypotension hypovolemia could lead to renal hypoperfusion could also lead to pre renal azotemia then the heart pumps blood and uh, a significant amount goes to the kidney so congestive heart failure acute mi massive embolism pericardial tamponade all could lead to renal hypoperfusion and cardiorenal syndrome then any systemic vasodilatation like in sepsis or anaphylaxis or cirrhosis could also lead to decreased renal perfusion mm. similarly after surgery or the effect of anesthesia leads to increase tonicity of the vessel supplying blood to the kidney hence lead to renal hypoperfusion certain drugs like cyclosporin could cause it non steroidal anti inflammatory drug by decreasing the production of prostaglandin could cause it too the second most common uh, cause is uh, intrinsic renal damage and as i said before we will see where the damage is if it uh, if intrinsic injury is to the tubule that is acute tubular necrosis and that could happen because of severe prolonged renal hypoperfusion uh, like uh, in shock as a complication of surgery hemorrhage trauma pregnancy pregnancy and there are certain drugs which are nephrotoxic and could cause tubular damage like antibiotics like gentamicin uh, anti cancer drug contrast media organic solvents heavy metals uh, then there are also some toxins produced within the blood like as a breakdown of hemoglobin or red blood cell causing hemoglobin urea a rhabdomyolysis leading to myoglobin urea so all these are causes of acute tubular necrosis and within the intrinsic causes this is the most common cause of uh, intrinsic cause of acute kidney injury and most of the atns are ischemic and most of the ischemic atn are as a result of pre renal azotemia which causes 70 80% of acute kidney injury and then comes the glomeruli post infectious gn lupus nephritis iga nephropathy infective endocarditis good pasture syndrome all could lead to inflammation and glomerular nephritis and nephritic syndrome and rpgn uh involvement of the interstitium could lead to acute interstitial nephritis and vascular involvement it depends if it involves large vessel it could ca cause renal artery stenosis if it affects a small vessel it could cause vasculitis and malignant hypertension and atherosclerotic disease and ttp all could lead to acute kidney injury so currently we are discussing the etiology or causes of acute kidney injury we have discussed pre renal azotemia and then intrinsic renal damage and now let's uh, there is another cause of acute kidney injury covid covid could cause acute kidney injury by different mechanism by causing atn rhabdomyolysis tubular damage podocytopathy ttp ischemia hypercoagulability there are different mechanisms of acute kidney injury and then in the setting of acute kidney injury secondary to covid you could also have sepsis multiple organ failure that could be additional contributing factor towards acute kidney injury and you need to differentiate if this is because of sepsis causing atn versus some other mechanism 
post renal is easy you do an ultrasound and you find find either uh, urinary retention urinary obstruction because of bladder ca bph kidney stone anything which blocks it from here to here uh, is post um, renal azotemia anything which decreases renal perfusion from the aorta and vessel to the kidney is pre renal and any damage within the kidney is intrinsic or renal cause which could be tubular damage glomeruli vessels and interstitium blood clots papillary necrosis could also cause post renal azotemia this is the most important usmle question sometimes they give you a scenario and ask you to differentiate pre renal and atn and uh, i would say there are different ways to differentiate like urinary sediment and specific gravity would help you obviously pre renal would have higher specific gravity higher osmolality because of dehydration but the significant or most important test is uh, fena so urinary sodium is less and fena is less than 1% in pre renal azotemia and the reason for that is since there is renal hypoperfusion and dehydration the the body is trying to conserve sodium so that it could reabs of water so there would be less sodium in the urine so urinary excretion in the sodium or urinary sodium will decrease and same is the mechanism for fractional excretion of urea osmolality is up because there is a small amount of concentrated urine so urine osmolality and specific gravity does go up so what are the complications of acute kidney injury if left untreated or it's very severe so for that you need to understand what does kidney do kidney uh, maintain fluid balance makes urine when there is a kidney injury there is less urine formation you could develop polyp urea and urea the volume stays in the body you develop fluid or volume overload you go into fluid overload chf heart failure shortness of breath so if a acute kidney injury patient presents with shortness of breath volume overload that's because of polyp urea and urea because you have lost that function similarly kidneys play a uh, important role for electrolyte uh, uh, balance so there is less excretion of potassium because of acute kidney injury so you develop hyperkalemia you cannot get rid of the extra acid so you develop metabolic acidosis you cannot get rid of the waste product like urea and creatinine so you develop uremic syndrome uremic pericarditis uremic encephalopathy you could also develop erythropoietin deficiency and anemia you could also develop hypocalcemia hyperphosphatemia hyperparathyroidism uh, some toxins and drugs are not excreted so you could develop toxicity of that for example if you are giving a regular dose meronum you could develop seizures because of meronum toxicity you could develop hypertension if acute kidney injury is because of glomerulonephritis so these are very important cases i would discuss and this is how the patients would present so you know whatever we have learned and whatever i have taught so far how do we apply that so let's see a 70 year old male with an urea for 48 hours and abdominal pain creatinine of 7 what do you think has i would say most likely had uh, urinary retention because of pph leading to bladder distension abdominal distension and rise in creatinine so you could place a folic catheter and that will take care of that and you could do an ultrasound and confirm bph or any other cause of urinary retention a 40 year old male with hepatitis c leading to decompensated liver disease ascites and that lead to decreased urine output and rise in creatinine different mechanism it could be large volume ascites increase in abdominal pressure it could be hepatorenal syndrome it could be spp sepsis it could be vasodilatation or lead to renal hypoperfusion and pre renal azotemia 7 year old boy has a sore throat developed hematuria creatinine went up could be nephritic syndrome secondary to post streptococcal glomerulonephritis 55 year old female with gentamicin for infective endocarditis going on for 3 weeks creatinine has uh, increased to 4 urine output is good so gentamicin induced nephrotoxicity causes atn does not decrease the urine output so it's non oliguric cause of atn so that could be because of aminoglycosides 6 year old male with stemi underwent ptca stenting 2 days later creatinine went up most likely contrast induced atn 6 year old female with pulmonary edema low ejection fraction creatinine went up probably cardiorenal syndrome secondary to decreased renal hypoperfusion 
which is a form of pre-renal azotemia. 26-year-old male with absent left kidney, uh, the other kidney had a renal colic and urea, obstructive uropathy, rise in creatinine, so you need to take care of that stone as soon as possible. 70-year-old male with COVID, ARDS, multiple organ failure, creatinine has increased different mechanisms, and we have discussed that. 26-year-old male with hemoptysis, creatinine, 6 nephritic syndrome. So patient has most likely developed RPG and secondary to good pasture syndrome. That has caused hemoptysis, creatinine has gone up, and there is nephritic syndrome. 30-year-old female with SLE, now with oliguria, hematuria, protein urea, and creatinine is rising. Most likely has diffuse proliferative or class 4 lupus nephritis or RPGN or crescentic GN secondary to lupus nephritis. So this is how we diagnose. And then what do we do for treatment? Um, obviously, you treat the underlying cause. You try to prevent acute kidney injury. You try to prevent contrast induced AKI, gastroenteritis, volume depletion. You try not to use nephrotoxic drugs. Uh, you, you treat underlying heart failure, liver disease, sepsis, BPH, stone, just like we discussed. So once you treat the underlying cause, you could take care of the acute kidney injury. But while you are doing that, you could develop certain complications. Or if you can't treat it, or if left untreated, you could develop hyperkalemia, metabolic acidosis, fluid overload. For each of these, you need to conservatively manage them first. Like hyperkalemia, we have a full lecture on hyperkalemia. You could see that. For metabolic acidosis, you could give bicarbonate. But if you are unable to treat medically, then this is an emergent indication for hemodialysis. A renal replacement therapy is for chronic kidney disease, but for acute kidney injury, there are certain indications. For example, hyperkalemia, acidosis, fluid overload, not responding to medical therapy. Pericarditis is an indication. Severe uremia, uremic encephalopathy, certain toxins need to be removed with dialysis, like lithium, for example. And then there are different forms of renal replacement therapy. You could consider urgent start peritoneal dialysis, uh, standard uh, intermittent hemodialysis, CVVHD is another option. Sometimes we just want to remove the fluid, like, for example, our patient with ejection fraction of 15%. So you could do scuff which is slow continuous ultrafiltration. Sometimes you want to do standard dialysis, but urea, creatinine, potassium is not that bad, and you just want to remove fluid. You could do isolated ultrafiltration. Sometimes for good pasture syndrome and things like that, you could uh, you need to do plasma phrases. Sometimes patients are hemodynamically not stable and you don't have CRRT, so you end up doing a slow, low-efficiency dialysis called SLED. So there are different forms of renal replacement therapy and depending upon the indication, one is used versus other. So please subscribe uh, to our channel, Good Doctors, by Dr. Shafiq Chima. Currently, I am putting lecture. Dr. Shah Sarwar is doing that. I am uh, expecting more physicians to join. And if you have any question, you could WhatsApp me at my cell number 0311-238-1111. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you liked it. And we will, uh, the next one I think I'll do on membranous nephropathy. Thank you.